Hey guys, my name is Yasub and welcome to another PSPDF kit tutorial. In this video, you will be learning about PSPDF kit's Vue.js library and see how easy it is to manipulate PDF files using it. We will be creating an end-to-end -end project using Vue.js and PSPDF kit that will merge, rotate, add and remove pages from PDF documents. You will leave with enough knowledge about PSPDF kit to successfully integrate it into your own Vue.js applications. So without any further ado, let's begin. This is what we will be making in this tutorial. On the right hand side, you can see a demo PDF with five pages in total. And on the left hand side, you can see the final product. So in this final Vue.js application, we have an open PDF button. I use this button to open the same demo PDF you're seeing on the right hand side. Now the application itself has done a few automated modifications to the PDF file. Firstly, it has rotated the first two pages. It has merged the PDF document with itself, resulting in a total of 10 pages rather instead of the original five. It has removed a page from the PDF and it has added a custom page at the very end with custom dimensions. And you will be learning how to do all of this in this tutorial. PSPDF kit has very good documentation available detailing on how to set it up with Vue.js. We will be following all the steps listed in this documentation page in this video as well, but it is always nice to look at the documentation to see what is possible with PSPDF kit, as we will not be going through all the available features in this tutorial. First things first, let's hop on over to the terminal and make sure you have the latest version of Node installed. I have version 18.7.0, which appears to be the latest version while recording this video. And next, we're going to make sure we have Vue CLI installed. One thing to note here is that I'm going to be using Yarn as the package manager in this tutorial, but you're more than welcome to use NPM as well. If you go to the official documentation of PSPDF kit, we have listed all the commands for NPM as well as Yarn. So you can go there, select whichever package manager you want to use, and you will be shown the instructions for the respective package manager. So let's go ahead and try installing View CLI. I already have it installed, but I'm still going to run it again just to be sure. Perfect. Next, let's create a new view project using the view create command. I'm going to name this project PSPDF kit view demo. This command is going to take a while to run. Just make sure you select view three as that is going to be our main focus in this video and not view two. Now let it run its magic. It is going to set up all the various dependencies for a default UGS project. We will be adding the PSPDF kit dependency in just a bit. Nice. Now that the default project initialization is complete, let's CD into the directory. And let's add the PSPDF kit dependency. We need to do one more thing for PSPDF kit to work the way we expect it to work. And that is to copy the PSPDF kit for web library assets, which are currently located in the node, node modules folder and move those over to the public JS directory. For that, first of all, let's create the public JS directory. And then I'm going to run a copy command. Here we are copying the PSPDF kit library from node modules and moving it over to public JS directory. Run this command and we have successfully added PSPDF kit as a dependency and place the files where they're supposed to go. Finally, let's do a dry run and make sure our default Vue.js application is working fine. To fire up the development server, we can run the yarn serve command. And now if, if we open this URL that is showing up in the terminal, we should be greeted by the default Vue.js page. So far, so good. Let's also copy our default PDF file to the public folder to use in our project. I will paste a link to this PDF uh, in the video description so you can use the same file if you want. And after this, we are ready to start writing some PSPDF kit specific code and open the demo PDF in the PSPDF kit viewer. At this point, our full directory structure should look something like this. We have some default configuration files and we have a node modules directory containing all of our dependencies. We have a public folder containing a default index.html and a demo PDF that we just placed there. 
and there's also the JS folder containing the PSPDF crypto library assets. Now let's hop on over to VS Code and start writing some code. First things first, let's create a new component with the name of PSPDF container.view. This is going to contain all of the component code for the actual PDF viewer and editor. And we're going to start off by creating a new template. This is a super simple template. We only have a div with the class of PDF container. This is where we will initialize PSPDF kit. Next, we are ready to start writing some script. If you've ever worked with Vue.js before, this should feel pretty similar to what you have been doing in the past. Now let's import PSPDF kit. Next, let's open up a export default block. Here we are going to name our component the same as our text file. You don't necessarily have to do it, but it just makes things easier if we name the file and the component the same. Next, we are defining that the component is going to expect a prop with the name of PDF file. This is going to contain the path to the PDF file that we want PSPDF kit to load. Moving on, let's define a mounted lifecycle hook. Here we are calling a load PSPDF kit method that we haven't defined yet, but we will do so in just a bit. And once that method successfully returns, we are emitting a loaded event. Next, let's define this actual load PSPDF kit method. This is super simple. What we are doing here is we are asking PSPDF kit to unload if it has already loaded itself in PDF container. And then we are asking it to load it again passing it the prop value that we're receiving as an input to this component and giving the class of the container where we want PSPDF kit to initialize in. Next, let's also define the for unmount lifecycle hook. Here we are telling PSPDF kit to unload itself once the component is unmounted. Now, one thing missing is we also need to define a watcher. A watcher is going to take note of the value of PDF file prop and once a value changes, it is going to call the load PDF PSPDF kit method again. This will just make sure that whenever the value of PDF file changes from our parent component, we reload PDF PDF kit viewer with the new file. Before we can use this component in any other file, there's one last thing we need to do, and that is to define the default height of PDF container. This is necessary because by default, containers have an undefined height. And PSPDF kit is going to fail to load if a height is not defined because it does not know how much space it is supposed to take. And in order to fix that, let's go to the end of this file and add a style section defining the height of PDF container. Here I'm setting it to 100 VH. You can set it to whatever you feel like. Now that if we have the custom PSPDF kit component defined, we need to reference this component inside our app.view file and load it. To do that, let's hop on over to app.view file and replace everything here with, with the code I'm going to show you. So we are going to start off with a simple template. We are here we have a div with the ID of app. This is where our view application is going to be initialized in. Next, we have a label and an input. This is going to create an input button at the top of our application, and we can use that to open a new PDF file. And then we have the PSPDF kit container Give passing in a prop value of PDF file and handling the loaded event via e handle loaded method, which we haven't defined yet, but we will do so in just a bit. Up next, we are going to start writing the script section. Here we are loading PSPDF kit container from the newly created component. And then we have an export default block. Here we are defining the default value of PDF file via the data function. And uh, we are also registering our custom component to be used in this view application. I'm also going to go ahead and define two methods. Our application is going to have two methods. The first one is handle loaded. This is acting as an event list listener for the loaded event emitted by a PSPDF kit container. And we have the open document, which is fired whenever the input value changes. Handle loaded is doing nothing other than logging a success message in the console. We will be adding more code to this method in just a bit. The open document method just makes sure that we are loading a PDF file in memory via create object URL. And if we already have a file in memory, we are revoking that object's URL. This is important so that we are not using more resources and more memory than we really have to. 
If you have never used both of these web APIs before, you should give them a read. They're really neat things. Now, if you have a keen eye, you might have already observed that we are importing PSPDF kit container, but the actual component file is in PSPDF container. So let me just rename this quickly to PSPDF kit container. If you go to the browser now, we should see a demo application working with the default PDF loaded. It doesn't look as nice as what I showed you initially, so let's fix that. Go back to the application code, go to the end of this file and add the styling. You don't have to copy all of the code you're seeing on the screen. I will be sharing the link to an accompanying article where you can find all of this code. So you can directly copy the code from that article and paste it in your document. Basically what it is doing is it is hiding the input and it is stylizing the label to act as a button. And now if we go back, it is refreshed and we can see a really nicely formatted label that is acting as an input. You can try clicking this open PDF button and selecting some other PDF file that you might want to load just to make sure everything is working fine. Now that we have a basic application running, I think it's time that we start delving into the automated workflows. The first automated editing workflow we are going to be looking at is merging two PDF files. And to get started, let's hop on over to VS Code and start writing a new method. So the new method I'm going to be writing is called merge PDFs. What it does is it fetches the PDF file that we are already loading using the open PDF button. And then it is passing the blob of that PDF file to this apply operations method. So apply operations method is available on the instance of a PDF PDF kit object. And this is most of the time going to be the method you will be using when you want to manipulate a PDF file. So in this case, we are using the operation of import document. This is the type that you are going to be using whenever you want to merge two PDF files together. And we are telling it that we want the new document to be merged before at the very start of the PDF file, which is going to be the index zero. And then we are passing the blob as a document that we want to merge with the pre-existing document. And now we just need to make use of this method. And the way we are going to do that is uh, we'll come up here under the handle loaded method. And we can write something like this dot merge PDFs and pass in the instance of PSPDF kit. Once you save this, you can go back to the browser. And as you can see, we have 10 pages here instead of five and the PDF is merged with itself. Perfect. Now the second workflow we are going to be taking a look at is rotating pages in a PDF document. Again, let's hop on back to VS Code. And this time let's create a new method. I'm going to create this under merge PDFs. And for this new method, I am going to call it rotate pages. Here we are again using the apply operations method. We are passing the type of rotate pages. We are passing it page indexes that we want to be rotated. And we are telling PSPDF kit how much we want the page to be rotated by. Here it is 180 degrees, which means that it is going to completely flip the page upside down. We can make use of this method by coming up under the handle loaded method, comment out the merge PDFs line, and write something like this dot rotate pages, pass in the instance of PSPDF kit, and pass in an array containing the indexes of the pages that you want to be rotated. Here I'm passing in zero, which means that we only want the first page to be rotated. So now after saving this file, if we hop on back to the browser, we can see that the first page is rotated and we can change it to 0, 1, which now means that the first two pages are going to be rotated as you can see here. Perfect. Now we are ready to move on to the next workflow, which is going to be adding pages to a PDF document. For this next uh, workflow, we are going to create a new method once again. This time I'm going to call it add page. We are again using the apply operations method. The type of the operation is add page. We are telling it to add this page at the very end of the currently loaded PDF document. We are telling it to change the background color of this new page. We are telling it the width of the page and the height of the page. Now, one thing to note here is that we are using the PDF PSPDF kit dot color, but we do not have access to dot color in this particular file. So in order to get access to that, we need to import PSPDF kit in this file as well. 
So in order to do that, we can just go to the very top and type import PSPDF kit from PSPDF kit. This should give us access to the color object that we can create now. And in order to use this newly created method, we can again go back to the handle loaded method, comment out the this dot rotate pages line and add a new line, something like this dot add page and pass it an instance of PSPDF kit. After saving this file, if you go to the browser, you should see that the total page count has increased from five to six. And at the very end of the document, we have a new page with a custom background color. Now the very last workflow we are going to be looking at is removing pages from a PDF document. And in order to get started with this workflow, let's again hop on back to VS Code, add a new method below add page. And this one is going to be called remove pages. Here we are again using the apply operations method. The type is going to be remove pages and we are passing it the indexes of the pages that we want to be removed from the document. We can go up to handle loaded, comment out this dot add page and add a this dot remove page, remove pages. And here pass in an instance of PSPDF kit and pass in the indexes of the pages you want to be removed. And after saving this file, if we go back to the browser, we can see that the first title page of the PDF file is no longer present. And this wraps up all the workflows that we were going to be taking a look at in this tutorial. This video was just a glimpse of what all is possible with PSPDF kit. It makes working with PDF files so much easier and opens up endless possibilities. Please go to our documentation page to see what all is possible with this amazing library. There's a reason why industry leaders like Autodesk, DocuSign, Dropbox, and IBM make use of our technology to power all of their PDF related needs. If you encountered any issues while following this tutorial, please refer to our troubleshooting guide. It lists all the common problems and their solutions. We also maintain a GitHub repository with a working UJS example project. So if you were not able to get PSPDF kit to work at all, you should check that out as well. And like always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. We would love to make sure that all of your PDF related needs are catered to. Until next time, take care.